Hey folks, thanks for tuning in. Please join us over at rivianstories.com for all the latest Rivian news. Maybe pick up yourself a t-shirt while you're there. Thanks. Jimmy, you were talking about this event, right? This happened last weekend? Yeah, Saturday, yeah. Drive Electric ago. Earth Day, Jacksonville, Florida. You said you met up with about seven or what's it? Eight, eight. I see. Eight total, yeah. And then we, we yeah. caravaned over to the event and we got some head turns. It was awesome. I um, bet. All RS members, which was really cool. And then uh, two or one additional RS member showed up in his white R1S, Henry. Mike Labrie drove up from Deerfield Beach, which is about a four and a half hour drive. So that was pretty awesome him to come up. Tom and Tammy Scala, they came up from the Orlando area in their white R1T. I left out Mike. Mike was in the red, the Red Canyon R1T, which was great to see in that there. Mm-hmm. But yeah, ended up, there was three other Rivians that showed up that were not part of RS. Uh, one was actually a Lucid employee. He was there with mm. uh, Lucid's company vehicle that he drove, and then uh, either his dad or his buddy drove his forest green R1T up for the event. So in total, there were 12 uh, Rivians there, which was awesome to see. Compared to one year ago, it was just us. So to go from mm-hmm. one R1T last year to 12 Rivians, nine nine R1Ts and three R1Ss was, was great to see, and... Uh, the event coordinator that was there last year remembered me being there and he was shocked and super grateful that all of us showed up, which was super cool. You're going to have to look to your right for this, Jimmy, but uh, what this guy or gal have going on with the uh, Compass Yellow here? And yeah. Is there some writing, some little customizing yeah, there? Yeah, it's just some customizing. So uh, that's Henry. Uh, he is a uh, local... A lawyer here in Jack's. Uh, his Instagram handle is Rivian Lawyer. Uh, mm. So that's at, that's there at top above the uh, the Rivian Compass. And then his daughter, mm-hmm. I want to say it was his daughter that uh, has a cricket and did uh, mm-hmm. created the Compass logo in a, in yellow. So he's got that overlaid on the Compass underneath the frunk. Yeah. Yep. Looks pretty sweet. Very that's cool. Awesome. Maybe our friends at. T wraps need to start making those for people. That'd be pretty cool. I I like that as a customization. Yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah, actually, if mm-hmm. you could go back go back to that picture of my truck uh, real quick again, Kyle. So, Skylar, you'll you'll appreciate this. That is a Jeep four by e to the left of my truck on thirty sevens. Mm-hmm. Nice. That Whoa. thing. It, that thing is ridiculous. That also belongs to another RS member or RS members, John and Sammy. And uh, so they brought that out. And then the limestone R1T that's in the next picture. So that's their limestone mm-hmm. R1T. And then they've got that super sweet Jeep 4xE on 37s, which that thing looked killer. That's sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Huh, that's awesome, man. Thanks for yeah, everyone yeah, who came have, out. I have seen posted on the Rivian Stories community, these Earth Day events are happening all across the country around this time of year. And matter of fact, I, yeah. I just yep. looked up when our local one will be happening. And it's not this weekend, but next here in Austin. So, yep. yeah, if the audience is interested look up these earth day events mm-hmm. uh i've i've heard good things i've never been to one mm-hmm. i just want to hop over to our kind of last topic that i had rj was interviewed by marquez brownlee uh for 43 minutes great little chat did you guys have a chance to listen to it hopefully because i was just going to kind of say did anything stick out or are there any kind of high points i forget when the actual you heard it here first moments came they might have been towards the end yeah uh i did so we'll i did see. catch yeah, I did catch two of them, um, mm-hmm. and if there were more than two, then then I missed the third. The third, you heard it here first. Uh, yeah, I mean the well. Let's jump right into that. Um, we have an update to the wireless charging pad. It was kind of like you heard it here first. Now, yep. correct me if I'm wrong, but that'll have to be a physical update. You got coils right there, right? That's that's not an OTA thing, correct? Yeah, no. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. going to be hardware yep. for sure. And I'm curious sure. whether yeah. 
a retrofit will be made available for people that already have their vehicles or whether it's just something that's going to be fixed moving forward in new production. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, it doesn't bother me too much. You know, RJ kind of said, yeah, it's super frustrating. And it can be if you're trying to get that darn thing to work, but the elegant and well thought out solution of just having a cable that can, uh, you know, snake through is faster and just super convenient anyway. So that's what I always use, but yep. needs an update for sure. So that's good. The other thing I was thinking of was just the camp speaker. And he mentioned the option of having in the future at some point, a drawer instead of the speaker. Uh, Jimmy, was that in last 15 or is that news to you? No, that was, that was early enough that I, I got that one too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think that's uh, well, I want to awesome. say with that, you know, this. Okay, so I was going to go to you, Skyler, because, you know, concealed carry came into my mind as far as lockable storage. And then my buddy Skyler in Texas. Uh, so would you opt for that over the speaker? I don't know. I, I like it as an option. And I just think mm -hmm. that it's smart to have lockable storage for anything that is is in kind of an inconspicuous position in the vehicle. I just think that's smart. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, without any glove box, you know, it kind of takes that position. I would agree that I would want both. I'd want to be able to throw in my speaker <laughs> sometime, and then I want to be able to throw in the drawer, you know. I just kind of want to sub them out. Of course, the thing with the speaker that RJ articulated is, yeah, you – you never need it until it would be great to have it, you know, until you need it, <laughs> you know? So having it with you at all times though is great. And I could see where it would be a pain in the butt to have lockable storage for some specific reasons or just the convenience of more storage, like a glove box and then, Oh, sub it out. So maybe I'm kind of going back on what I just said about having the option to swap out from drive to drive. I don't know. I don't know. I have a sad confession to make, and it's that I have never <laughs> used the camp speaker other than pulling it out to test it initially. And mm. the, the bad mm -hmm. part about that is You're that, honestly, I just forget that it's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have used it just when I'm, like, cleaning the car. On Saturdays, although I, I didn't in the winter because it's so freezing. I'm just kind of in and out, but I would pull it out there. But I don't know. Sometimes when I'm cleaning, I always, I always just have my earbuds in too, so I'm not bugging neighbors. Sometimes it's easier if I'm listening to podcasts, just have the ear uh, AirPods in too. But I've So I've used it. Um, I always thought that I would use it more um, this summer when like families going swimming or something, you know, arrive at the Grandma Beth's pool. And we have the speaker there because we do have a Bluetooth speaker that we would take one of those like ultimate ear ears things. Um, but then again, like that thing is beat up and indestructible and waterproof. So I'd almost still rather tell the kids to take that instead of my nice Rivian speaker. Uh, but yeah, it's Jimmy, he's, he's the camper right now, 17 times. Do you use it, Jimmy, when you're camping and whatnot? Do you use it we, much? Yeah, we've used it every camping trip. Mm -hmm. every day that we're camping so of our 17 camping trips probably eight or nine of those was multiple days and mm -hmm. so you know you could take take our 17 and double it in some days and triple it others so yeah we've mm -hmm. we've used that thing probably 40 40 or more time yeah. at least while we're camping and once we finally get camp set up and we start to wind down and we're having dinner or whatever or we're cooking the camp speaker comes out every mm -hmm. time yeah that's that's cool some of them might just be habit skylar you and me just it's there when you to break it out more often totally Looks like he might have looped off of the video oh he's still there on audio um so the only other thing as far as like you heard it here first marquez asked him about the R2 platform and when we'd learn more about an R2 vehicle and RJ didn't really want to commit to anything, but he kind of said, and this was towards the end, like maybe sometime in the next year or so they'll have some information about an R2 vehicle. 
So that was maybe a little bit of a you hear it, heard it here first. But obviously, no, no leak. Yeah. You know, nothing more than that. So I don't know if you right. can classify that as a you heard it here first. Was there anything? Is there anything else that I'm missing as far as uh, new things that we learned? You know, a lot of this was geared towards people just discovering the Rivian, Rivian brand, which to our particular audience, it's kind of uh, it's still fun and entertaining, um, yeah. but not much new. Did did we pick up anything else new that you guys wanted to mention? Uh, not that I recall. I think the one thing that I was kind of shocked about. Uh, going back to the speaker was that RJ at one point even mentioned that the speaker probably could be a little bit smaller. Um, mm -hmm. That was kind of because he was trying to use it as a as a mobile charging station, right? Yeah, as a mo phone. mobile charging station. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think it's honestly. I mean, is it a little big? Sure, but I mean, I think for its overall uh, the overall uses of it you know, the fact that it's a speaker and a lantern. I mean, we haven't really used the lantern function as much as we've used the music function of it, but we have used it for, you know, five, six, seven, eight hours straight. I feel like maybe, maybe eight hours might be a stretch, but I feel like we've used it for a very long time throughout an afternoon and a day when we're just kind of hanging out by the campsite and like, it just, it just works and it lasts mm -hmm. So yeah, I was kind of, I was actually kind of shocked to hear that he thinks it probably could be smaller. That was mm -hmm. interesting to me. Yeah, I would leave it the same size, fill up that space anyway. You know, I just thought it was probably pretty much the dimensions of it take up that whole void space under there. Mm -hmm. um, I'd rather have bigger, louder sound than a little bit smaller, personally. Um, right. All right, so if there's no other like uh, you heard it here, you heard it here first. Are there any other? just general takeaways that you had come to mind. If not, we can make this a little bit quicker. I've got a few and okay. First and foremost, I thought that it was awesome how they used the Rivian as the recording studio. You can see some of the equipment there on the console. I assume mm -hmm. that, uh, that thing on a stand is the microphones and the sound mm -hmm. yep. did sound great, which kind of caught me off guard. So I thought that was cool. And it's obviously being powered off of the R1S. So I just thought that that was mm -hmm. yep. interesting from kind of a tech geek perspective. The other thing that really caught my eye is that Ocean Coast interior in the R1S. Mm -hmm. It looks amazing oh, yeah. and for whatever reason mm -hmm. i feel like it's more impactful in the r1s than it is in the t it, it, that that's just kind mm -hmm. of a, a sense that i get um they definitely picked the correct exterior color for the r1s to film <laughs> in. they sure did let me try and find let me scroll around here there we go and the last thing that I just thought was absolutely fascinating was hearing RJ talk in a little bit of detail about some of the decisions as it relates to the R2 platform and the trade-offs. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a traditional suspension vehicle and I loved how he mentioned that it will still have the character of the R1 platform and kind of those elements of the brand, but it will be simplified. And I can't wait to see what the price point is going to be. And I can't wait to see the designs either for R2. I mean, that's something that, mm -hmm. you know, my wife is excited to see as well. Mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah, if I had, I think if I had one uh, takeaway, I thought it was interesting how he kind of doubled down on no CarPlay, no Android Auto, um, and that they mm -hmm. were they were the head chef when it came to software, and basically everything they were going to put in the R1 was going to be very deliberate, and they were going to be running the show. So for those that wanted CarPlay or Android Auto. 
at least for right now, that definitely doesn't sound like something that's going to come to the R1. Mm -hmm. I think that's a mistake. Yeah, I agree. Well, okay, Skylar, you go ahead and formulate a response to that as far as a mistake. However, did you guys see that GM is now pulling Apple CarPlay and Android Auto out in order to do their own entertainment system and basically have um, access to, you know, all of the, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say, all the other data that they need for all the other dynamics of the vehicle and over-the-air updates and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, and that, that might be the reasoning behind it, Kyle, is that anything mm-hmm. that stays within CarPlay or Android Auto is more or less invisible to Rivian, and Rivian may want to monetize some of that data. I actually recently talked to a guy from GM that helped GM start to monetize some of the data that they were getting from vehicles, and it is not an insignificant amount of money and revenue that that we're talking about Mm -hmm. here. I mean, it's literally billions of dollars. And wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So pretty interesting stuff. But from my perspective, I mean, the Rivian UI and interface works for me. But I know a lot of people are accustomed to Android Auto and CarPlay. And it eliminates some of the, what I would consider deficiencies in Rivian's UI navigation, probably being the biggest one for most people, followed closely by message access, apps that aren't supported by Rivian, so on and so forth, right? And from my perspective, I think Rivian needs to understand what they do well and what is critical to the vehicle but at the same time if there are better solutions through android auto apple carplay for some of the things that are deficiencies or that they don't do as well cut development on that and let you know one of those other ecosystems take over a bit more and granted it doesn't have to be the entire interface in my opinion i think that you could give it its place and granted that may bring a lot of complexities um you know in in how that interacts with the rivian ui but i still think people want it and it's something that they need to think think about be very thoughtful about Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, you know, if you go back to, you know, the interview with Marquise and, and RJ, he mentions that he feels like Lucid kind of caved to the idea of having it in their vehicles. So they now have, was it CarPlay or Android Auto? But it's kind of in all of those screens that the Lucid Air has, it's in like this one teeny little corner just so they have appeased the Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, whichever one showed up on in the Lucid Airs. You know, I, I feel like Rivian caved on the, the 24-hour shot clock on the inverter and for the majority of people that actually use it for its intended purpose, it, it hurt us more than it hurt the people that forgot to turn it off because the majority of people that are using it for its intended purpose need it for more than 24 hours. And and maybe I'm wrong, but I need my coolers to run for more than 24 hours because I go camping for more than 24 hours when I, when I go out into the woods so I, I don't want to see Rivian cave in this instance just to appease a certain amount of people because Rivian hasn't gotten to where those people feel Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are currently at. 
basically what I'm saying. There's both some there's some cons with both of those things. Um, and Rivian can get there. We just have to give them time. Does that make sense? Am I there? I hear you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, guys, my honest feedback here is that compared to my 2001 Tahoe, I'm just, I think it's awesome. <laughs> I think the software is great. Uh, dang it. <laughs> Valid. Yeah. Um, but I am glad that they kind of went into that a little bit and um, addressed it. I'm kind of just looking at the chapters which is a good way to kind of get into just the remaining of this for the last few moments. Under EV trucks and first-time buyers, the interesting takeaway there is that Rivian owners are about 80% of us are first-time EV yeah. buyers, which is just huge. Um, and then the great point there is that EV adoption will have to be driven by very compelling vehicles that are just best in class, including ICE, at a certain price point. You know, you just want to buy because it's just overall a better value and a, and a better better product than the counterpart and i know skylar i think at one point you told me maybe you have a domain like evisbetter.com or something so whew, that's exactly what we're talking about you know they have to have to make it to where ev is better like from all sides of the the court and the ball field it's just a better experience and a better product overall so that's cool. A lot of first-time buyers there in that. Um, and then that, that leads into the next chapter on charging networks, which we've just talked about mm. a lot. Yeah, and charging was good. That chapter besides was good. the I product, that that's one. such a huge part of the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's besides the product, such a huge part of the experience. And, you know, there was a little bit of not new news there, but kind of trying to prod along to that prediction we had a month ago about how many level three charging locations will, will there be in a year from now. And I think that he tried to lead him on that a little bit, but um, it definitely seems like it was, it's a priority. You know, they have their eye on that target. Like we mentioned in that episode a while ago, there's just a lot of moving parts there. Um, and so it's happening slower than anyone that everyone wants it to happen faster. You know, everyone does. But any other kind of high points from from those two? I'll just say that it reinforced something that we had perceived and that it's that the primary focus for the Rivian Adventure Network is on the East Coast and the West Coast first, and mm -hmm. then they're going to work towards the middle of the country or across the country from there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I yeah. think my, my last big takeaway from from this uh, conversation between those two was that he talked about forums. He didn't mention Rivian stories at all, which I was a little I was a little bummed. I was I was a little I was a little sad. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, he mentioned Reddit Sorry. several that's all, that's times, all I got. but he did. He did. Yeah, he mentioned Reddit, but I think that's about the only one he gave names. I mean, I was surprised that he just didn't mention jimmy and skylar by name i mean seriously that's what i was waiting for oh <laughs> uh, yeah no i mean kind of related to that jimmy is it, it it is good to it's always good to see rj out in front again and just kind of hear from your leader so to speak you know <laughs> yep. um so I'm, I'm glad that the the timing of this was pretty good because it's been a I guess a little bit since we've seen him in like a longer form uh, content space like this besides those quarterly calls, right? Besides the investor calls mm. and whatnot. So that's a good yeah, timing. I mean, we'll get and, on here and in, at some point. Yeah, and in front of a guy like MKBHD, which, you know, for those, mm -hmm. and I'll be shocked. I won't be shocked. I know there'll be some that aren't familiar <laughs> with who he is, but if you don't check him out, his content's great. He's a super good dude. Oh yeah. Um, always has great the content. Best ever. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, phenomenal, yeah. Phenomenal, phenomenal content. Yeah. yeah. Kudos, kudos to RJ for going on there and talking to him. I haven't seen him like the last 10 or 15 minutes, but from what we saw of it, it was, it was a really good interview. Yep. For sure. All right, that's all for this one. We have more coming, so please subscribe. In the meantime, we hang out at rivianstories.com. 
click on shop, find yourself a t-shirt. Thanks so much for your support.